got what you takes you can win Today is your day to begin Don't give up here, don't you quit This is the moment, this is it You know that you can when you will To get to the top of the hill Part of the fun is the climb You gotta just make up your mind Cause today is your day Nothing's gonna stand in your way Today is your day And everything is going your way They can break all your bones And life's gonna kick you around Kick you again when you're down But today is your day And nothing's gonna stand in your way You know today is your day And everything is going your way Brush yourself up, no regrets This is as good as it gets Don't expect more or no less Just get out and give it your best Because today is your day Nothing's gonna stand in your way Because today is your day Everything's going your way today, 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 today. Mm -hmm. So take it one step at a time. Promise you, you will be fine. You just have to make the first step Then another will follow you do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Cause today is your day Nothing's gonna stand in your way Because today is your day You, Let's you, give Jim you. some love. Oh, thank you. Welcome, everybody. I was just back there tapping my toes and singing along. I'm like, oh, my goodness. <laughs> I got to go out and good to welcome you. So welcome. How y'all doing? All is well? Yeah. Welcome to our revealing experience. Jim, I just adore you. I'm glad you're back. Let's give Jim some more love and welcome him back. He was gone last week. I know. It feels like a long time. <laughs> All right, y'all know this. We welcome ourselves into this space. It's been loved up just for you. And we welcome those who are still coming. Yeah? Yeah? All right. Come on in. We welcome. We welcome. We welcome you. Come on in. We welcome. We welcome. We welcome you. Let, Let go, be free, come on in and take a seat, we're glad you're here, 
We spread in love, joy and cheer. So come on, come on in, come on in, come on in, come on in, come on in. We welcome you. you. Sing come it now. Come on in, come on in, come on in, come on in, come on in. We welcome you. Let, Let go. go. Be free. Yeah. Come on in and take a seat. We're glad you're here. We're spreading love, joy, and cheer. So come on in, come on in, come on in, Jennifer. Come on in, we welcome you. Come on in, come on in, come on in, we welcome you. Come on in, come on in, come on in. Come on in, we welcome you. Come on in, come on in, come on in, come on in, we welcome you. Come on in, come on in, come on in, come on in, we welcome you. Come on. Thank goodness you sing nice and loud and pretty. Yes, it is a good thing we all sing nice and loud and pretty. It makes for beautiful, beautiful music. Ah, so let's go within and sing out. Reveal, reveal the love inside of me. Reveal. to be and every time I open up love is what I see reveal the love in me reveal reveal the peace inside of me reveal the peace to be and every time I open up peace is what I see reveal the peace in me reveal reveal the joy inside of me reveal the joy to be and every time I open up joy is what I see reveal the joy in me reveal reveal the love inside of me reveal the love that I was made to be and every time I open up what love is what I see oh yeah every time I open up peace is what I see sounds good every time I open up joy joy is there you what go. I see reveal the love So in the joy of friendship and love, let us go into prayer. Knowing that the very center of my being is the law of my experience. It is the love of the law of love unto me. Mm, love sees itself in all things. It dispels any idea of discord. It opens the heart and touches the soul with its grace. For it is love and all love. There is nothing outside of this love essence. For it is the God seed within each one of us. 
expressing the compassion, the kindness, the gentle ways of spirit. So in this moment of mystical awareness, it is us coming together, opening our hearts, and connecting to that divine essence, that sacred space within. Knowing that love expresses from within out into our world. And how truly grateful I am for Reverend Sunshine and all her endearing ways and creative means of expressing the love, that sacred place within. How good it is. It is our highest good that we are present in this moment. For God is right here in the center of this moment, in this sacred space. And so it is. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Okay, so the topic for this year is we're getting all booked up. And we're using the big Science of Mind book. So our, our daily reading is, um, is from the Science of Mind. And um, so if you would like to um, share this spiritual practice, there's a reference guide in the family room. So please help yourself. So my reading is taken from the... Um, from Ernest Holmes and from the book Prospering Power of Love, Catherine Ponder and Emma Curtis Hopkins and a few of our loved ones. <laughs> so, love is the greatest power on earth. Love is the eternal flame of the universe. Nay, the very fire itself. God is love. Love is self-givingness through creation, the impartation of the divine through the human. Love is an essence, an atmosphere, which defies analysis, as does life itself. The essence of love, while elusive, pervades everything. Fires the heart, stimulates the emotions, renews the soul, and proclaims the spirit. A universal sense alone bears witness to the fact that God is love, and love is God. Love melts situations that seem impossible. How often we try to battle our way through life, experiencing disappointment, pain, and failure at every turn, when we could love our way through life, experiencing success every step of the way. There is no reason for you to feel disillusioned or disappointed if love has seemingly let you down or passed you by. Those who bitterly declare, declare that their lives are without love are mistakenly looking to some, someone or something outside themselves for love. You have all the love you need for healing, prosperity, and human relationships right within yourself. Divine love is one of your mental and spiritual faculties. You don't have to search outside yourself for love, for you can begin releasing it from within outward through your thoughts, feelings, actions, and affirmative prayers. As you do this, you will experience the power of love in all its fullness. It is the mission of love, both personally and impersonally, to produce eternal good in your life. Your part is, to wonder, is not to wonder how love works, but just to begin releasing it from within yourself, and you will attract to you, whatever people, situations, conditions that are for your highest good. Emma Curtis Hopkins wrote, everything is really full of love for you. The good that is for you loves you as much as you love it. The good that is for you seeks you and will come flying to you if you see that what you love is love itself. All people will change when you know that they are love. We shall change toward all people when we know that we ourselves are formed out of love. All is love. There is nothing in all the universe but love. So the opportunity is here now to choose love over fear. We live, move, and have our being in love. Love can only love. 
Love cannot hurt. If it hurts, it is not love. Only our lack of faith in love hurts. As you begin to think more about how you can love your way through life, love will reveal to you its transforming power. If you are not attracting the good that you deserve in your life, learn to express love. Become a radiating center of love, and you will find that love, the divine magnet within you, will change your whole world. When your heart is full of love, you will not be critical or irritable, but you will be divinely irresistible. <laughs> No, we, uh, I, I wanted to introduce Sunshine. <laughs> and the topic is the power of love. <laughs> Thank you, Kay. I know I would want to walk off after saying love is irresistible because it is. Thank you for that beautiful prayer and that great combo reading. Hi, everybody. Hey. As I look out and see love expressing as each and every one of you, I am reminded that love is another word for God or peace or joy. The absolute essence of this creative intelligence that has created everything out of itself. And yet, most of the avatars and most of the great men and women who have written about life have talked about God, this creative intelligence, from a perspective of love, from this quality that is love. And so, as we just begin to explore this idea of this four-letter word, L-O-V-E, love, and how we can use that four-letter word instead of the other four-letter words that riddle our English language, like the F word, fear. <laughs> Miriam, where did you go? <laughs> That love casts out fear. When we think about all the things that we can possibly be afraid of, when we think about life's energetic and we think about the things that we get to do and the things that we have to do, sometimes we are riddled or we are filled with fear. Whether it's going to work, whether it's watching the news and watching the latest current events and how cities and towns are living in fear, or if unemployment is running out, or if you're not going to make it to collect the first social security check. <laughs> because the fear is that it's not going to be there when you become of age, of that golden age where you get to sit back and retire on Social Security. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of fear around that. I, I listen to people um, and listen to conversations, not that I eavesdrop, but as I am privy to conversations that are happening all around me, it's interesting to recognize that the basis of these conversations are fear-based, that it's based in fear. Fear that there's not enough of something or too much of something. Fear that Folks are not going to get what they want, their ambitions are not going to be met, or that their needs are not going to be met. People have fear of success, fear of failure, fear of spiders, of heights. And I'm reminded of a simple fear inventory. Interestingly enough, this fear inventory comes from a 12-step program. 
And this fear inventory is taken by members of this 12-step program. And what they do is they write out a list of fears and they number them in one column. And then they ask themselves on the next column why they had that fear. You know what the bottom line was? What do you think the bottom line is? Why? Pick a fear that you may have and what do you think the bottom line is why you have that fear? Who's going to shout one out for me? Fear of death. Why do you think you have that fear? Uncertainty. Okay. Why else? Out of my control. Why else? It's unknown. Okay. What was that one? Loss. A sense of loss or, or an actual loss. So if we take even the fear of death, let's say, because that came right from our community, this idea of death, so the bottom line I'm going to tell you is the things that you said are, are, are quite appropriate, and yet if we just kind of cut to the chase, the bottom and the final denominator is we don't trust God. We don't trust God or no, or we believe in separation more than we believe in our oneness with life. So, when I think about death, we've been raised to believe that we die. In actuality, life is eternal, and this is just one of the pit stops that we have in our eternal life. One of the great many ways that we get to express as eternal beings, because remember that our life is God. God doesn't die. That is an eternal life, and we are that expression of the one. We are the way that God shows up on this planet, and though there might be the appearance of death, it is simply the transformation of eternal life, like a flower, that we think that blooms and there's this beautiful bud and then it opens up and it just expresses its beauty and then it begins to shrivel up and then we say, wow, that plant died or the flower died. And really what's happening is, is that life is transmuting and transforming itself. It never really dies. It is now a different energetic. It is eternal. So when I believe that I fear death or that there's a fear of death, the only reason why I may fear it is because I forget that my life is God. I forget the truth of my life, that it is eternal. I forget the, the truth of my pet's life, of my relatives, of, of everything, that everything is a beautiful, magnificent way that God is expressing itself in human form, in tree form, in, as the ocean. As, as our galaxy, as our planet, as everything. It is never dying. It is never death like a final. It is just a transformation. It's transmuting itself into a different energetic. So the only reason I have that fear is because I forget the truth of my life. You know, it, it brings me right to our our meditative reading for today. We, as you know, we're reading the Science of Mind book in one year, and today's reading is pretty long. It's on page 518, and I'm going to read the entire thing to you, so please be patient, okay? As perfect love casts out all fear, so my fear flees before the knowledge of truth. I am not afraid. That's our reading for today. And if I read today and I continue to do this each and every day, before a year goes by, I will have read the Science of Mind book. But notice, notice how specific this writing is. As perfect love casts out all fear, so my fear flees before the knowledge of truth. 
So before the knowledge of truth or before love, my fear is cast away. That love casts away all fears. That when I begin to love, when I begin to really know that my life is love and that love is all that there really is, a.k.a. another word for God, this expression that is God, when I know the truth, it casts away all fears. So when I'm afraid of success, it's because I believe that I'm not successful or that God is not successful because if God and I are indeed one, then what is there to fear? I know that... um, It's been written that fear should be classified with stealing because it robs us of all the great, wonderful opportunities that we have in life. Fear should be classified with stealing. So could you imagine being arrested every time you were in fear? (laughs) You just stole an opportunity from yourself. You know, put your hands behind your back. We're going to send you away right now. But imagine that for a moment, that every time we engage in fear every time we pay more we have more faith in fear that we than we have more faith in love that we are robbing ourselves that we're stealing from ourselves that we are removing ourselves from the opportunity to experience our life to the fullest i know that as i uh, a, a couple of times when i was at the grand canyon And as I was looking over these majestic canyons and looking at the beautiful colors and the rocks and, you know, being there with Sunny and being there with my my folks, this was uh, many, many years ago, and I remember just kind of like coming to the edge, and it was really, really far, and the awesome sensation, the the vastness of the down below, all of a sudden, these thoughts, these fears, it's just like, no, don't get too close to the edge. Moms, come on, come on over here, you know. And and of course, you know, when, when, when I go to the Grand Canyon, you know, it's kind of like, oh, well, let's go to this point or that point and do the research. And of course, All the research wants to show, like, how many people have fallen off the canyon, never to be seen again, and stuff like that. And it's like, please do not give me, like, I don't want to know, la, 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 la. Because when I'm there, like, I don't want to remember that. Like, whoa. Oops. (laughs) I don't want to live from that place of fear to where I am uh, robbing myself of the opportunity to be in this grandeur of life and this beauty and this magnificence. And how many times, you know, and maybe you've counted on one hand and the other hand and had to come back around again to both hands, maybe use both feet. How many times can you count that you have allowed fear to, to rob you from opportunities? Maybe asking him or her out on a date. Maybe asking him or her you know, not asking him or her to be your friend at school or maybe, you know, at work, not approaching someone or maybe not speaking your truth because fear paralyzed you. I know there's been lots of instances in my own life personally where I've allowed fear to stop me from my greatness from experiencing my wholeness, from experiencing the truth of my life, from experiencing the joys. Now, some of you might go, yeah, sunshine, but you know, sometimes there's this healthy fear. You know, like the fear of a a fire and, you know, a a hot stove, you know, because you don't want to get burnt and hurt. Well, that's not fear, that's respect. You know, like I respect the fire and respect the, you know, the stove and and the oven. And I know that if I touch it when it's hot, that I'm going to be hurt. That's having respect and recognizing the consequences. 
But being afraid or allowing myself to live from a place of fear because I don't know what's on the other side, now that's different. And when inevitably, anytime I forget who I really am, fear will grab a hold of me. So we get to, or I get to, remember to come back to love. I know Marianne Williamson talks about it. She has her book, Return to Love. That when I return to this place of love, when I return to this place where the most high dwells, this indwelling love, this joy, this peace, this creative intelligence that is living as me, when I return to that place of love, love of humanity, love of myself, love of life, love of the law, the spiritual laws, when I return to love and recognize the power of love, love casts out all fear. That when I am in a heated situation or when I think that someone has wronged me, that when I return to love and I return to this place of love and instead of sending that nasty email and pushing send, you know, Sonny says, is that email written in love? Did you write that email with love? Did you write that letter with love? Are you making that phone call with love in your heart or is it with fear? Fear that you're not going to get something you want, something that you think you should have or that you're going to lose something that you have or not get I said that already, not get something you want. And that's probably because a lot of us want something (laughs) and we fear not getting it, not having it, not being able to enjoy it. And so we live from that place of fear. So our task, especially this particular week, as we take this in, is to pause. Is to pause and know that the truth will set us free. The truth will make us free. And that truth is is that love is all there is. Some of us say it this way, God is all there is. The I am presence, this radiance, this intelligence, this divine guidance system is all there is. And when we return to this place, when we utilize the power of love, what love does is it illuminates those areas that we are not necessarily seeing clearly. It makes clear some of the things that have been obscured, some of the things that have been blocked, some of the things that have been blurry. The light of love shines on it and it makes the truth really visible. And we're able to then live from that place. How many times are we practicing that? How many times are we indeed driving by a car accident and just sending love, just radiating love? How many times are we watching the news And instead of being in judgment, oh, those people again. Or, oh, if they would just get their act together. Or how come the da-da-da or da-pa-pa or pa-pa-pa. It's always them. And instead, utilizing the power of love, because, you know, God forbid it happens in my neighborhood. Or when they want to build a homeless shelter for folks experiencing don't, don't do it over here, do it over there. The fear comes up. It's like, no, I don't, I don't want that in my neighborhood. I have little children. Or no, are you kidding? I worked hard for this. That fear comes up. If we're going to be real, we're going to be real. Let's face it. But instead of responding, and that actually is not responding, it's actually reacting, because a response takes some thought. A reaction is just knee jerk. Boom, that's not over here, not in my neighborhood. Or those people again, or da 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 da, whatever it is for us. 
the practice this week is to A, catch ourselves when we're operating from that place of fear. And what I'm going to share with you is, is that sometimes it's so, so subtle, we don't even know that we're operating from fear. But be willing to open your awareness and be willing to just say to yourself on a daily basis, I'm open to recognizing and seeing the places where I operate from fear. And begin the day. And see just how many times you can notice a tick mark of, oh, I'm operating from fear, operating from fear, operating from fear. And if you can, at that moment, how do you shift? Now, I'm not talking about doing an about face. But I am suggesting that even just a minor shift, oh, wow, look, I'm operating from fear. Even just a minor shift for a different perspective, even just allowing a little bit of love. I don't have to ask for a whole lot of love. Even just a little, a big part of love. Just a little morsel. I'm hungry. Just a little morsel. Just that slight shift in accepting a little more love. And even though I'm doing this, accepting that it seems that it comes from the outside, really is how do I release love from within me? Because the truth of the matter is, is that that's who you are. You just forgot. You forgot that love is really who you are. You forgot that love lives in, through, and as you. So how is it that we just release a little more love? How is it that we can just radiate a little more love? How is it that we can just let, let that, that grip hold the love go just a little bit so it can release? And that we might live from that place just a little bit more. That we might begin to see with the eyes of love, just a little more love than we did from this perspective, just a little more love. That we begin to see that those people who are experiencing homelessness or those people that it's always them or this people or that people, whether it's at work, whether it's at school, whether it's in your neighborhood, that those people are the way God is expressing beautifully and magnificently on this planet. So the more I get to see them through the eyes of love and the more I get to experience releasing more love instead of hoarding it all for myself, the more I release this love, the more I let it go, the more I get to radiate this love, it casts away and it casts out fear. While I am holding tight onto whatever little piece of love I could get, whether it's my mama loves me or my wife loves me or my husband loves me or somebody loves me, Jesus loves me, I don't know, shoot. Instead of holding on to it so tightly, if we can just release this love and release it so that it is a flow instead of a stagnant energetic, we begin to live from this place and that love casts out the fear. What is the most loving thing to do for my pet right now? What is the most loving thing to do for my, my, my sick parent right now? What is the most loving thing to do with my children right now? What is the most loving thing to be? How can I be more loving? How can I express more love with these folks who I call strangers but really is God, with my neighbors and my, my, my coworkers, my peers? How do I release that? And just like I asked at the top of the day, reveal to me in a language that I understand where I'm acting and living from fear, the question begins to shift. And instead of looking for where I'm fearful and now recognizing it and releasing more love, then it, what starts to happen as we begin to uncover where we've been living from this place of fear, what begins to happen now is 
We begin to have this daily walk and daily talk with the I am presence that is within us, that is living in through and as us, is really how can I be more love today? How can I be more peace today? How can I be more joy today? How can I be more abundance today? How can I be more generous today? How can I provide clarity today? How can I be a listening heart today? Because I'm no longer living from that place of fear, but I am looking for all the many ways that I can simply let the I am presence that is me, as me, radiate from me onto God as you. Love casts away the fear. I'm no longer fearful about whether I'm going to get mine because I remember the truth And the truth that makes me free is that there's enough and there's plenty. And because my life is God, then everything is coming together for my good. Not just my personal good, but the collective good, for the good of the community, for the good of us all. But when I'm being selfish and self-seeking and I'm living from a place of fear, then it's about me and mine and my little me and my little place right here. And I got to make sure I get mine. And I don't care if I step on your feet to get mine because I got to get mine because I'm living in a place of fear. But when I'm living from a place of love, there could be one slice of pizza, if you will, and it can fill and feed the multitudes. Why? Because as I live from that place of love and I begin to share what I have, then others go, well, well, shoot, I I, I, I got a bottle of some beverage outside, let me grab that. And share that with community. Oh, and somebody else go, oh, yeah, and I had this great salad that I was going to take home, but let me bring that in. And we begin to really take a look at together we achieve more. That together in this oneness, in this community, when we are living from a place of love, that we are indeed casting out fear of I'm going to go hungry. Because all of a sudden, we're feeding one another. It reminds me of this, uh, <clears throat> of, you know, those stories that people send around on the internet and stuff like which one is heaven and which one is hell and all of that stuff as, you know, as if, right? But there's a room, and in this room, everybody has their hands in a brace, so they're always stretched out like this, and there is a a feast, a table with a feast, and everybody's hands are locked in this mode. They're strapped to some boards, and they have forks and spoons on the ends, but they're all going hungry because it can't, (laughs) right? You can't, they can't bend it to kind of do this. Yet, in the other room, is the exact same scenario, but everybody's laughing and having a great time, and they're all being fed. Why? Because they're feeding each other. They're feeding each other. They don't have to bend. They're taking and they're feeding each other, and they're being fed. And so even though it's the A and B situation, and they're exactly the same, One group is operating from fear and the other group is operating from love. And when we operate from fear, everybody goes hungry. And when we operate from a place of love, everyone is fed. It casts out the fear. So we're going to just take some time in the silence right now. And I'm going to simply read this long meditation again. And we'll be with it. And maybe you'll have a revelation as to some of the areas that you're operating from fear. Where you can release more love. And this is our meditation for this few minutes that we're together. As perfect love casts out all fear, so my fear flees before the knowledge of truth. I am not afraid. I'm not afraid. 
for the fear has been cast away. And as we let love be our come from, we know that it casts out fear. And when we live, as Ernest Holmes speaks about, 
when we experience freedom from all discord, when we experience the freedom of living from love, wow, we open up the doors to do amazing things. We open up the doors to live an amazing life. We can see the potential of ourselves and of others. And we step forth. Into our power. Into our peace. Into our joy. When we allow love to lead the way. And cast out fear. We begin to do amazing things. So for this and so much more, I give thanks. I give thanks for the recognition of the one power, the one presence that is God, that is living in through and as us right now, that is expressing itself in a divine and magnificent way. This one power, this one life that is God has created everything out of itself. Therefore, my life is God, the way that God expresses in human form. There's nothing, no thing that separates my life from the life of radiance, of love, of joy, of peace. It is who and what I am. And so as I know that this is my truth, I know that this is the same truth for and about this spiritual community, calling forth health and wholeness, calling forth peace of mind, calling forth freedom of all discord, calling forth that we live from this place of joy, that we live from our love and that we allow it to radiate and to be released and to be received and to be given freely as it casts away the fear that robs us from our greatness. So for this and so much more, I give thanks, blessing us all, blessing, for, blessing all of those who call our prayer ministry, those who write in prayers, those who sit before practitioners for prayers, blessing each and every one of us right where we are now. I know that it is so, and so it is. Amen. Yeah. And as you allow that exhale to fill the room, know that it is already done in the mind of God. And that right where you are, God is. And that you're amazing. And as amazing beings, we participate in the ebb and flow of life. So as we have been so richly blessed and gifted, we also have the opportunity to richly bless and gift this community. So I'd like to invite the ushers to come forth at this time. Thank you, Melissa and Dennis, for your sacred service. And this is the time where I invite you to simply... Take out your gifts, your tithes, your offerings, that which you've brought to share with the spiritual community, that which you have chosen to invest in Seaside Center for spiritual living. That this is our spiritual home and our community where we have an opportunity to participate in the financial health and wholeness of our community. So I thank you in advance for your generous hearts knowing that this indeed is a spiritual practice. And as you take your, your gifts, that which you're investing today, and you hold it over your heart, just give it your own blessing. And what I know is that that which fills these baskets fills it to such an overflow, and that that which you have given continues to bless you even more, and that we are wise stewards of that which we receive in these baskets, and that we use it for programs and staff and to keep the doors open and available so we're grateful for the gifts that we get to give and we're grateful for that which we receive and we participate willingly 
in the ebb and flow of life. It is so, and so it is. Amen. Go forth, ushers. And as you give, you receive. So open your hearts wide open now and receive the beautiful music of Sunny Day and Jim Bianchi. Each new day brings And with every step you take Bless the progress that you make The reason you live Is there in every gift you give So love your life, love your dreams And you will do amazing things Amazing things. 
go within. <sighs> Close your eyes. Go to that deepest, deepest part where you're your biggest, biggest cheerleader. And sing it to yourself. It's the truth. Nice job. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, we're going to do amazing things right now. We have an opportunity for um, our community to simply uh, be a revealer of truth, whether it was something you heard in the message and the music and the prayer and the reading. I know, huh? You need a moment, huh? <laughs> we get an opportunity in spiritual community to simply speak to the community. Is there anyone who wants to share something amazing? <laughs> hey, beloved. Hi. Um, I just wanted to say um, I'm back in school. It's just this summer I had a great, great summer because just at the ending of summer, my aunt, she had a baby and um we were expecting it it was on I'm it was so glad. it was due on <laughs> it was due on April 12th and it was only the 9th and she had her hurry to the hospital and she got it that night and I'm just really glad and I get to see her daughter which is Isabel Grace I forgot her last name though um but I get to see her well on Friday and for the rest of the weekend, and I just kept saying to my mom, I can't wait to squeeze her. Mm-hmm. So she was born August the 9th? She, she's just so cute. She is, and so are you. I just can't stand it. Yeah. Well, you know, beauty recognizes beauty. I just can't stand it. Thank you. Thank you, Nicolette. All right. One more. How are you, beloved? Pretty cool. Hello? Uh, do we... Do we... Let me see. I was on. Yeah, let's turn it. It's just working. <laughs> How about now? Yeah, it's on now. Hello? Yeah. Oh, okay, there we go. All yeah. Right. Hello. Um, yeah, so pretty awesome. It, I really appreciate the, the conversation about the fear and the love transformation thing because I can reflect back on times in my life where when I was in fear, it just seems to have a spiral and domino effect. Mm -hmm. Where it just kind of, it's gone. It's all good. Here, you stand close to oh, me. Is that work? Better? Yeah. When you speak to me right here. Oh, okay. So I can just talk into Yeah. There we go. This talk, is actually pretty cool. Whisper in my ear, yeah. beloved. <laughs> <laughs> whisper sweet nothings. <clears throat> so being in that place with if, if and when those times in the past have been occupied by fear, it can spiral in a way where it's almost like restricting the flow of mm. energy. And Bob Proctor, I had a good close relationship with him at one time, and he used to tell me that it's like having a kink in a garden hose, and very little production can come out of it. No flow. And exactly. And so what's interesting is it can carry over into different areas of life. So I'm totally experiencing some fear in some areas, 
And if I'm not mindful about it, it can actually translate over into other areas of yeah. life and it can affect so many different areas. So it's cool to know that it doesn't have to be a complete transformation, just a little shift, a little as you shift. were sharing earlier. Mm -hmm. And just to be okay with that uh, is powerful. And then to focus on what's good. And again, that's what's so awesome about having a community like this to come and hang out at and having amazing friends and people to lift us up because it's very relevant and it's very timely for me. And I appreciate that and I appreciate you. My joy. Yeah, so, and it's, yeah, we're, it's life and we go through these yeah. opportunities to reflect and shift and it's not always easy and those body sensations come at times. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm grateful to have this place. I'm grateful that you're yeah. here. We're so close, you might as well hug. <laughs> Thank you, beloved. All right, well, here we are, kind of at the end of our time together. It always reminds me of the Carol Burnett show. I'm showing my age, you know, like, I'm so glad we had this time together, yeah. <clears throat> and I am, I'm so glad. <laughs> Have a laugh or a sing a song. Seems we just get started and before you know it. <laughs> time we have to say so long. <laughs> I love the music team here. Let's give some big love to Jim Bianchi and Sunny Day. Thank you so much uh, for your musical inspiration today and just the way you carry us through. Want to make sure we thank Melanie. Thank you so much, Melanie, for your service tonight. Tim, who's been doing our camera and online, thank you so much for your, your loving service. Want to thank our practitioner, Kay Samuelson, and our practitioner who's been holding the light tonight is Kathy Paulson. And tonight, uh, they will be available for you in our chapel. If you'd like a spoken prayer, they will uh, speak the word for you and they will know the truth about each and every situation. If you don't want to have a spoken prayer tonight, or if you're a little shy about that, uh, right behind Kathy is a little uh, station there. It's our prayer request station. Go ahead and hand write a prayer request and know that uh, the ecclesiastical team here, meaning the practitioners and the ministers here, We'll know the truth, and we will pray for and about your situation for the entire week. So I want to thank our practitioners for being of such loving service. Thank you so much for your consciousness and the love that you bring that radiates through to this community. And I want to thank our uh, ushers, Melissa and Dennis. Thank you so much for your sacred service. And want to thank Ginny. Ginny, make sure it all flows wonderfully. She's also responsible for our beverages and our little snacks and refreshments. So after service tonight, we'll be uh, having some fellowship right there in our family room. So please join us and hang out for a little bit. Get to know the folks who you are on this spiritual path with. Um, and make sure that you get a hug from me and that you give me a hug back. <laughs> All right. Uh, we'll be here next week. Next week topic is love radiates. So we're going to dive a little bit deeper into this love energetic. So right now I'm just inviting you all to stand, rise in consciousness, and we're going to do our closing prayer. And our closing prayer is a song. It's in your program. You want the You want This is our prayer, a song of peace. We get to be the change we want to see with open hearts and open hands. We lift our voices in love. This is our prayer, a song of peace. We get to be the change we want to see with open hearts and open hands. We 
lift our voices in love we stand we lift our voices in love we stand we lift our voices in love we stand love you bring a friend next week see you in the family room Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you.